Hello! This is the One Episode Rule, the podcast about first impressions, coming to you live from Niflheim, the, the primordial realm of death and ice. <laughs> and podcasts. And podcasts. And podcasts. When when Our Lady Hell allows it. <laughs> uh, it's for real in Texas. If you if if you viewers out there know any Texans, check in on them. <laughs> yeah. They, if you're cold, they're cold. <laughs> <laughs> if you're inside. cold, they're dead. Um. <laughs> oh no. I'm sorry that oh. Texas became Antarctica all of a sudden. It is. Bad news, and it's really just exposing how like little the government cares about us. Yeah, some some common trends are continuing to emerge throughout this event. But uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, I come to the podcast to get away from that kind of shit. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so who am I here with? Um, I'm Blackle. Um, unlike last time, I am actually up to date on other side picnics, so that's good. <gasps> And I oh, like nice. it more every episode, so that's, that's great. So We've turned you into a proper little weeaboo, haven't we? You like yeah. an anime. Well, you <laughs> I don't know if I can even show. say that because I have gone through stages of watching anime, like, quite <laughs> to be up to date with the anime. Like this the amount the of anime about. you've seen, just even just with us, and the amount that you've absorbed through osmosis by exposure, I think there's no way to avoid calling yourself a weeb at this point. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're at All the very least up. a weeb All I have to proxy. Do is load up the Duolingo uh, Japanese. Course <laughs> and... <laughs> Finally, yeah, learn how to names properly. So. <laughs> <laughs> Start taking the Hongo. Um, Jojo, what's yes. up? Yes, hello. I am Joey. Um, doing pretty good. Uh, we have watched. A lot of different kind of content since uh, since we've last recorded this podcast. That's true. Um, we we hit a lot. Um, one of those I want to talk about, like for podcast reasons. Yes. Um, I do specifically want to talk about the anime one that we watched, yeah. but in doing so, I need to make a very cursed comparison. Really oh, quick. So, we did watch the new Ghibli movie, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, the 3D modeled Earwig um, and the Witch. Earwig and the Witch. Um, like. and I do want to talk about it, but let me let me tell you uh, just a small synopsis of Earwig and the Witch, which is a uh, a small and uh, very demanding girl figures out a way to make an extremely powerful evil entity do her bidding. <laughs> oh, my. <You> know, <laughs> so, so, viewers, we also watched Psycho Gorman. <laughs> which is about a movie about a little girl discovering a way to do make an evil entity do her bidding. <laughs> so this is yeah. part of the uh, putting a Alicia and Cthulhu genre of, of yeah. Yes. <laughs> <I see>. Now, <laughs> now work in Willy's Wonderland there. No. Um, uh, huh? Huh? Um, I feel no. Bad there was all of these. <laughs> there was a girl in that one, but she did not make e- any evil entities uh do her bidding so i'm i don't know there's don't a girl know. there <laughs> she fought one with a switchblade <laughs> well she did she did make nick cage do her bidding and <laughs> you could argue that he is mm. a very powerful and evil entity <laughs> we don't know about his modems all he, all all we know about him is that he takes breaks very seriously and loves soda and pinballs <laughs> yeah that's that's it so um since this is our anime podcast, though, <laughs> yeah, let's actually talk about uh, Earwig. Which Earwig? Um, I'm going to put out a pre- preliminary review on Earwig. For, uh, Earwig sure. for real. This is a good movie. Like, it's good. It's it all, uh, the dub is great. 
the animation is charming. Parts yes. of it especially good. The uh, uh, the Mandrake's tantrums, for instance. The Mandrake. Are, I love this character. <laughs> are very good. And I'm going to nip a criticism in the bud. Because, yes, this movie ends poorly. But I did find out why this movie ends poorly. Because <laughs> it, it's very good until it just sort of ends. Very sudden. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that's because they didn't have much material to work with because this was written by Diana Wynne Jones, the same person who wrote Howl's Moving Castle. Mm -hmm. And the issue was is that she was writing it when, as when she was very old, and she suddenly reached a point where she realized, "I'm going to die soon," so she oh. had to wrap it up really quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you can tell, like, they were, they really wanted this to be, like, a series or something, but it just, it wasn't going to work that way. Um, uh, it's a real shame, because what they did make is good. <laughs> it's re I thought it was really good, and, um, you know, even, even in spite of the sudden ending, I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. That's it's, all I want to say. It's a, it's a good movie. Uh, sometimes the 3D lands, sometimes it doesn't. The animation is top-notch, at least. Yes. <laughs> yes, true. And uh, all the voice acting is good. And Casey Musgrave bel belts out an adm <laughs> admirable take on a song that was very clearly written in Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was fine. <laughs> it doesn't quite translate to English very well, but it's still pretty catchy. <laughs> That made yeah. me think of the. Uh, I was watching um, only tomorrow or only yesterday, which is another Ghibli film, and on Netflix they have mm. like four different dubs you can choose from. And it, in oh, the wow. middle, there's a song they sing, and I listened to each dub to hear what the song was in each language. And <laughs> I gotta say, the German one sounded the most melodic. <laughs> nice. The other one <laughs> sounded like bad. <laughs> this was fine. It it just. It was just because of the language translation. Um, there's a there's a Ghibli movie yeah. that ends with a cover of uh, of West Virginia by John Denver, that and I can't remember. Whisper of the one. Heart, I believe. And it's the saddest. The Japanese version of it is the saddest song that has ever been written. Yes, I we oh we do God. need to see that movie someday. <laughs> oh man, yeah. so so yeah. That, Eric and the Witch. Uh, watch it, maybe. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> if you're having a Hello. bad day, or you're <laughs> <here>. something, <laughs> might, it might make it uh, more tolerable. Uh, I only have one news item, but it's a doozy, and it makes me really, really angry. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's bring the rage. Okay, so it's not about a release or, or a product or anything. It's just there was a video put out by somebody who was participating in uh, the anime uh, dormitory program, which is a program which allows uh, anime animator do dormitory program, a program that allows people to come and live in Tokyo for very little rent so they can get their start in the animation business. I approve of this program. It's a good, it's, it's a good program for aspiring young artists. But in the, uh, in the course of that, uh, she made a video talking about her income for uh -huh. uh, the, the her first year of being a full time animator and uh, on the and working on the side. I understand that she's a rookie and just came into the business. She should not have, for the year of twenty nineteen, brought in. Uh, 668,000 uh, yen, or roughly equivalent to 6,000 U.S. dollars. No. For the year? For the year. The last year I worked at Walmart pushing carts, I made $8,000. Oh, Jeez. No. That's real bad. In the first month of January 2020, she only earned... 14,000 yen, or $130. No! <laughs> that's oh, that's I know, so bad. I know that a lot of studios have a rough time with money. I know that the economic conditions are a little different in Japan. That is too little fucking money for a creative position of any yeah. kind. 
That's they, they should <sighs> unionize. She was clearly talented enough to get a job at a studio. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Talented enough that they were willing to like bring her over, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that sucks real bad. So, so I'm enraged. <laughs> it's the energy I'm bringing to this episode. Hey, people, people, pay your artists. You, we gotta stop devaluing the arts. It's yeah. Uh, this is just in general. <laughs> it's it's no good. Mm-hmm. If Come the Japanese on. government wanted to do something fucking real, they might uh, create some incentives to hire local artists. Yeah. So that every studio didn't ship everything over to Korea and then underpay any Japanese artists that they took on. <sighs> right. And then, you know, the artists, like, take it because they really want to do this job really, really badly. And it's yeah. just... She's happy to be to be in... The animation industry, but yeah. they're not valuing her enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, well, that's it's a real fucking bummer. Anyway, you guys want to watch a show and forget about that? <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's hopefully use eyeballs. let's hopefully get something that's uh, that's nice and makes yeah. us feel good inside, or at least that we can laugh at. <laughs> well, I I did pick something this time that I've been right. seeing all over the place because I thought. It might give us a chuckle. Okay. As opposed to a lot of the other drivel we've been watching. Right. All right. So, Let's uh, have it. So today's show is going to be Heaven's Design Team. Yes, I was hoping you were going to say that. I was thinking it. <laughs> Blackle clearly does not know what the fuck I'm talking about. So. I, oh. I vaguely know what you're talking about. Oh. I, I've seen clips of this come across my timelines and stuff and I've avoided clicking all of them because I was like, I know we're going to watch that on the podcast sometime. <laughs> it's been attacking me on YouTube for like three weeks, so I said fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, alright. Alright, let's rip it up, go! What if I told you that a snake was just a legless horse? <laughs> I would fucking destroy you. <laughs> I hate that you made me watch horse propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> well, horses. It's just a classic classic creature, you know. No, you got your you got your scaled horses, you got your swimming horses, you got, you got, got some flying horses. horses. <laughs> I mean, I guess that one's I they did I resent the implication so much that everything is based around horses, that horses <laughs> are the fucking seedling that all of life sprouted from, and I hate it. I hate it so fucking much. <laughs> There's so much wrong with horses. I want there to be I an mean, episode it's, of just going through all the fucking things. It's not the one them. that many creatures sprouted from. It was just like a heavily, you know, it was a good I- idea, and it was inspiring. <laughs> I contest that maybe horses weren't a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, knowing what I know about horses. <laughs> so, uh, do we want to? Do we want? Do we have a blurb? Do we want to get into the premise of this show? We should get. We should get a blurb. I guess. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of plot going on. No, no it's. This it's is, uh, uh, sort, sort of episodic. Yeah, a little bit popcorn anime-ish. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like that one anime we watched about the guy who makes uh, mixed drinks. Yeah. It's like, there's no plot. It's just yeah, a little like, bit like that. Thing. It's just, yeah. this is the thing for today. Yeah. yeah. And that's fun. And then it had, then it gets in there with some uh, some edutainment sections. Yeah. <laughs> edutainment. I learned today that uh, fucking anteaters do the T-pose. <laughs> yeah. Threatening anyway, I have a I have a blurb. Uh, I can read it or somebody else can if they want. Uh, you go ahead and read this one. All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. He also sought after a wide variety of animals to populate the planet. However, he felt that it was too tiresome to think of new ideas within his criteria. (laughs) To address his problem, God appointed an organization, the Heavens Design Team, to do the work instead. Shimoda is a newly hired angel who serves as mediator between God and the design team. 
As he steps into the role, he witnesses his co-workers conceive interesting ideas from many unique life forms according to God's desires. From giraffes and snakes to birds, anteaters, and everything in between, the possibilities for different animal species are endless. So, yeah. I adore the fact that they describe themselves as an OEM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Original equipment manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and their client is God. <laughs> yep. I wonder if they have other clients. Uh, the devil. Uh, but, uh, Satan. Satan. Um, so, hang on a second. The OP is fun. I like the music of the I OP. I liked the OP and, and the outro, actually. But let's get into the OP, because it was like... There was just a bunch of like little creatures running across the screen, and it was, yeah. it was very cute to see. Mm-hmm. And uh, the music was really interesting because it it was ska yeah (laughs) (laughs) it was it was interesting but i'm going to heavily disagree but uh i will say the intro huh well no it's uh no i just don't like ska um oh okay this was like this was like stealth ska so i had to (laughs) Took me a second to realize. I'm just like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> it was the, uh, it was the, um, it was the uh, Trojan horse of ska. Trojan horse, uh, not quite, Go. not quite the music that plays in a 13 year old's head whenever they get extra mozzarella sticks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so close. Yeah. I actually like Trojan. the outro a little better because of the little pop up storybook. <laughs> It's the music that plays in a 13-year-old weeaboo's head when their car sweat order goes through. <laughs> <laughs> so let's oh, talk about the show. Let's talk about the show. The first yes, bit? Yes. Strong introduction. Trying to make a giraffe. Yeah. They're like, we need to make a creature that, that can reach the leaves in the trees. Eat the, eat like, the leaf from the tree. Can, can we talk year. about the alternative ideas that we they can. had? So one guy created a tree. <laughs> to just to eat other trees, yeah, and ping uh, pong tree. The and other guy made a horse that flies. He made a Pegasus, and then was informed by Mars that there was no way such a creature would fly. And in fact, for it to exist, it would have to be jacked as fuck and shit all the time, <laughs> <laughs> constantly. <laughs> this, this, yeah. Fucking this, Gatling gun of shit. Yeah. This fucking shredded dung dispensary in the sky. <laughs> yeah. I love how angry oh, the engineer got. She was like so pissed. Furious. Like, I've told you multiple times that a horse can't fly, you bastard. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? Would you stop it with the flying horses already? Yep. I like the, the horses. I like the original long neck deer and how it immediately passed out from lack of blood flow to its brain. <laughs> Because its legs are real short. (laughs) And how it would need a 1.5 ton heart to pump the blood up there. (laughs) This is a good show. It's got constant biology jokes, and they most Uh of them land. Yeah. I'm going to review my notes here to find some of the better ones. (laughs) Also, uh, uh... whenever they uh, pulled the... um, the prototype long neck deer back into the uh, old the old uh, species garage. Yeah. Um, Jupiter followed because he said, "I like to Jupiter taste test all of the animals." So hungry. <laughs> He's so and hungry. He just wants to eat all of the creatures. Is he Jupiter or is he Cronus? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, um, it, can it we talk about how about Jupiter that he must have tasted human flesh? Oh, of course. And that's literally the second note I have about... I I wrote, he tastes the meat. Does that mean he tasted human? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know he did. He brought up a question that I'm interested in, which is, do you think giraffe meat is good? Um, that's a good question. It's gonna be a fucking lot of it if you shoot one. (laughs) It's a tall cow, so maybe. (laughs) They did specify that uh, animals that our herbivores taste the best and carnivores taste the worst. And we did see the giraffe eat a bird. So I don't know what to think. <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk about was how the giraffe came out. And the first thing that this new creature did was eat a bird. 
to eat, eat, a, a, eat a passing bird. Well, yeah. that's the thing is almost all of the uh, herbivorous species that humans eat will occasionally devour yeah. another smaller They're creature. They're opportunists, yeah. which I thought was like really good because like, yeah, that's accurate. It's, it's <laughs> true. They don't get enough calcium in their diets. Mm-hmm. They will just crunch up squirrels if they can catch them. <laughs> I saw a horse eat a bird once. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I've seen a cow as well. I hope I don't ever have to see that. <laughs> and a deer. It's bad. They're not equipped for it. <laughs> yeah. God. Poor birds. It's usually birds that get this. Imagine trying to eat a steak with a spoon. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. Just all, uh, you, all, all you have are molars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Speaking of eating birds, that moves us directly into our uh, our next kind of like segment of the show. Yeah, it was it was basically a couple of long sketches per episode, mm-hmm. uh, and the next one was yes, the the war uh, between Venus and Mercury over uh, birds and snakes, <laughs> and how snakes are just just like less horses. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know this classic design, the horse. Well, let's take all of these like useless limbs away and uh we do we're gonna create the snake and uh it's gonna be the most powerful creature it has no weaknesses it is and it's it is unnecessary for it to have separate excrement and reproductive <laughs> holes <laughs> yeah let's just combine those yeah um, i present to you gamers the cloaca <laughs> oh god recoiling in horror from the bright light and emanating from your suitcase <laughs> also i did it did just occur to me that mercury has um steve jobs vibes especially that uh keynote address about the snake he did it's true he has some yeah <laughs> he's got some weird <laughs> steve Jobs shit going on yeah and then venus was upset because her poor creatures keep getting eaten yeah <laughs> Yeah, Venus just wants to make pretty birds. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And who can blame her? That's what I would want to do. I think so, that's what So she up. did finally end up making uh, a bird that could p- protect itself from snake, but then it wasn't cute, and she was like, no. Well, <laughs> she yeah. just did Very... go ahead and create the secretary bird, a bird that just kicks the shit out of snakes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> it, does, it does kick the shit out of snakes, and it is still kind of beautiful. So Yes, exactly. The secretary bird is fucking beautiful. In fact, it's the best, like, I think it's the best drawn creature in the whole show so far. I, I I really appreciate it. Yeah. Of all all Kamisama's creatures, they're hitting some <laughs> of the best ones. Yes, yeah. yes. I want I, I want to see the episode about crocodiles. <laughs> yeah. Black, Black Fuck Friday. Uh, yes. I, I was rooting for the snakes though. I love the snakes. Well, everybody and everybody who like everybody likes snakes, except for the people who don't like snakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, snakes are good, but birds are good too. So I can yeah. get the, I can get this. <laughs> I just want, I just want good egg snack. Yeah, I, I do enjoy the, uh, the depiction of evolution as two gods trying to one up each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna make an update to this creature. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna push a patch. <laughs> yeah, patch so patch notes. Birds are now OP. <laughs> Somewhere in there, by the way, was one of the better smaller jokes, which I really like, which is, uh, what's his name? Shimoda uh, saying, uh, relaying the will of God that oh, yeah. new and fun frogs are always welcome. <laughs> yes! God I like frogs. That down too. He thinks they're cool. New fun frogs. <laughs> there are a lot of frogs out there, so There's, yeah, there I guess so. Frog. Not all are beautiful. <laughs> Some yeah. are poisonous, some are not poisonous. But they're all frogs, and you can't deny that. Some are poisonous, you, can't deny you don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, reminds me of that, that comic I saw where someone gets transformed into a frog, and they're like, oh my god, I'm free. I can chill on a leaf. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be uh, a frog. See, now I'm just, thinking about, I'm just thinking about the frog, that, the, the comic where the frog does all the squats. Oh, yeah. and then he leaps into space. He leaps into space. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Every time uh, I look at that, I think of the Iron gi- Giant. <laughs> so yeah, <bad>. Superman. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. 
Um, diver uh, diverging a little bit into Western uh, animation canon here, but uh, um, I do like the uh, the statement that uh, the Galapagos Islands is Beta Realm. Yes. Beta Holy shit, Beta yes. Server. We're going to put a shitload of finches on this island. <laughs> See what happens. We're going to confuse the shit out of an old man later. <laughs> it's fine. Gosh. Oh. Um, I, can we talk about the sausages? The yeah. <laughs> Jupiter, he, his hunger cannot it's be satisfied. Just genetically engineered himself a living sausage. <laughs> I... <laughs> the lively sausage, name pending. <laughs> When I saw that sausage moving, um, by it's, like wrinkling its skin from the top to the bottom, my oh, eyes. Oh, it's went bad! Down. It's like it's real poultry guys shit. Like Craig <laughs> D. Nelson, they crawling off the counter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I simply wrote pitiful <laughs> object, and that's all else I, I cannot. Remember. I cannot confront it. <laughs> oh man! I refuse to do so. So I will simply <laughs> think of him being crushed by a glyptodon. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed. Uh, that's I do one... like that he got turned into a piece of paper. Yeah, he just yeah. got two-dimensionalized. I that does bring up one thing with the show, which I don't think is that important because it is it is sketch comedy in anime form. So sure, the lore isn't necessarily supposed to be the tightest. But what time period does this take place in? Oh um, God! <laughs> now I <sighs> because they are designing armadillos, and they are in the same frame with glyptodons. <laughs> I want to say that this is like they're they're outside of the realm of time, and uh, to in my in my brain, God is just adding these creatures to whatever time period He sees fit. Maybe yeah. maybe what the deal is is that if it w if God did it all at the beginning and just let shit go, it would have been fine, and He could have done it Himself. Yeah, but. Maybe his task is to design all the creatures that will ever be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what I think. Which may be why he needs a needs a helping hand. Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's an entirely like, different segment for Obviously like... they're Obviously they're doing like evolution and stuff too. Hmm. So like <laughs> they have you to know. design every discrete form. <laughs> yes. God has God has basically um, done the concept of creature, <laughs> and now they have to just tweak the concept of creature to just kind of like, you know. So what we're saying is is that the design team is God's in-betweeners. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> uh, the design team is making fanfic that will be canonized. Uh, That's... You know. We're canonized? Hmm. Yeah, Interesting choice of terminology. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's yeah, he's up you know, you know, the, the big G is up there doing the fucking keyframes. And they're just doing <laughs> everything in between. So. Yeah. Um I just am curious, like I don't know if it's this team or a different team that designs all the eukaryotes and like the single celled organisms. <laughs> I've seen a clip where they go down and talk to the insect team. So they must be different teams. <laughs> yeah, this is the animal team. Yeah, this appeared they appear to just handle animalia. Although they did did do plants, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Say, it's not supposed to be that tight. <laughs> yeah. It's a comedy. It's just show. kinda funny. Yeah. It's a show about how this creature would need four hearts to live. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. I, I you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there is, a, I don't know if this is a fever dream or not, but I thought I saw a clip where they were designing, uh, designing echidnas, and it got really fucking nasty real quick. <laughs> so, uh, oh because god. Because echidnas are, cr are cursed creatures. <laughs> echidnas are... <sighs> well, they're a nightmare beast. Disaster. Disaster animals. They just uh, be like, I want... God has commanded you to make a creature with four penises. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see them deal with koalas because those are also disaster creatures. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Just in different that, ways. You know, that may have been the one that they were talking about. <laughs> Maybe. I want a fluff piece about sharks and I want a uh, <laughs> I want a attack piece on horses. That's what I want. <laughs> I want to, we gotta, I want we gotta be like 
that's like horses are bad. Sharks horses are bad. suck, that's actually. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you, Blackle. From what I've seen, like every other episode is an attack on horses because they're Saturn's favorite, and they keep coming up, and they keep pointing out things that are biologically fucked up with horses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I like how he did be like, "Hey, let's." You know, this this uh, tall deer is pretty cool, but let's make it a tiny bit horsier. And you know what? They did. They made its face <laughs> a did. little horsier. <laughs> yeah. They got be like, well, we got we to gotta keep Saturn in line. <laughs> yeah. You know, I liked that. We've already talked about the, the, the real life segments where they teach you things about real life animals. Yes. Yeah. The edutainment m- bits. Like, I didn't know that red-eyed tree frogs are like that, and that's cool. Yeah, their, their eggs just fall into the water if they think they're in danger. <laughs> There's a snake. Yeah. And they, they just show... Ejected, ejected. They just show people their scary red eyes if they if you scare them. <laughs> it's like, yo, check these out. Yeah, check, I check love these it. Out, buckaroo. I believe that I have similar evolutionary advantages when I'm in public. You remember <laughs> public from before the plague times? No. I could barely remember. <laughs> Guess what? Being six foot four oh four earns you a lot of space on the sidewalk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> oh man, so uh so yeah, this show this show was pretty rad. Uh I I definitely am going to watch more because I at the very least I want to see the bit on unicorns and I know that's in the next episode. Yeah, I was about that was how I was going to segue. I was just like, are we going to watch more episodes to see our favorite animal in these episodes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you like you happen to like owls or some shit and you hope they can do mm-hmm. an owl episode. Oh man, yeah. palace cat episode please. <laughs> just like it's a cat but rounder. It's a cat. Let's let's. It's got to live in the mountains, so we need to expand fluff. Yeah, it needs to be. It needs to be more of a ball. It's oh, like... but now its ears are getting frostbite, so we need to make the ears smaller. <laughs> let's uh. Ballification. It's just like God has. God has requested that you design a fox with the face of a man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So oh. so that the local people can believe that they they are shapeshifters and witches. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh man, Tibetan foxes are fucked up. <laughs> They're, They're <good>. just dudes. <laughs> yes. They're just guys. <laughs> <laughs> Little men. Oh, oh. man. What, what animal do you go to see at the zoo? <laughs> I haven't been to a zoo, like, since high school. Well, which animal did you go see in high school? Um, I remember, uh, my friend and I were laughing about, uh, pretending that all the animals in the zoo had poor AI or something. (laughs) Um, I think that was just a, uh, us picking up on the fact that they were very distressed. Oh, poor creatures. creatures. Being, uh, I usually go to the Fort Worth Zoo, which is one of the nicer zoos in uh, America. Um, yeah. and I go see the, uh, I go see the apes and I nice. go see the crocodiles. <laughs> Ooh, very they're, good. They had like... a very large Nile crocodile there at one point. <laughs> nice. I want to see crocodiles. I like meerkat. <laughs> My dad actually knew somebody who, uh, dropped his sunglasses into the <laughs> the alligator enclosure <gasps> or so. and the fucking Oof. guy in them just went down there and walked over them and got them for him. <gasps> wow. It's just like, yeah, we fed them earlier today. <laughs> They're not going <laughs> to move for three days. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, They're, too busy. They're too busy being flat. Uh, if, <laughs> if you haven't moved for three days, say, because <laughs> you live in Texas... <laughs> Oh you can alleviate the boredom and terror by sending us an email at uh, one episode cast at gmail.com. That is one the word, not the number. If you would like to tweet us the animal that you want to see on this show, you can do that at one episode cast on Twitter. As long as it's not, we cannot do anything about that for you. As long as it's not bot flies, I don't want to hear about it. No, or like leeches, 
Lampreys. Don't send us oh, that no, shit. Now I'm thinking about that person on Twitter who has the pet leech. Oh, oh no, we gotta get out of here. I can't get out of here. I can't deal with this. I gotta take Feeding gotta, my princess now. <laughs> I gotta sit down. <laughs> Got the sticks, we go.